Hello! Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and we're doing transposition. Now this is video three out of four on a series I'm doing on how to do transposition. You don't want to jump in here. So if you don't know what transposition is, go and watch the transposition intro video. Crucially, that'll explain why we do transposition as well as what it is. But then you need to watch transposition one and two and then come on to this one. So we're following the four steps, the same four steps we use when we solve equations to transpose or rearrange equations. Uh, let me just quickly remind you what those are. So first of all, the first thing you need to do when solving equations or doing transposition is you have to remove the fractions. Secondly, you have to remove brackets. Final, uh, thirdly, you need to move added or subtracted terms. And then finally, you divide by the number next to the letter. Now videos one and two, we're looking at steps four and then three, we're working backwards. So to start with, we just had equations that needed the last step. Then we included equations with added or subtracted terms. In this video, we're going to have equations that also include brackets. And in the final video, video four, will also have fractions. Okay, so a few examples then of how you do transposition with brackets. Let me just remind you briefly with a normal equation first, uh, and then I'll show you how you do it with transposition. Transposition is basically solving equations where most, of, if not all, of the letters have been replaced by numbers. So it's easier to see the thing with the numbers first, and then hopefully you'll make sense of it. All right, so if we have two outside the brackets, x plus one inside the brackets, and if we made that equal to 10, if we had to solve the equation, figure out what the unknown number is that's represented by the x here, step one is remove fractions. There are no fractions, so we skip that step. Step two is remove brackets. So this is where we take the number on the outside of the brackets and we multiply the numbers on the inside of the brackets one at a time. So it's two times x, which gives you two x, two times the plus one, gives you plus two. There are no brackets on the right hand side, so nothing to do there. Step three then is where you move your added and subtracted terms. This is the letters to one side, numbers to the other side thing. So leave all your letters, your two x, leave that on the left. We want the 10 to stay on the right. And the plus two, we're gonna move over to the other side. And remember, chain side to chain signs, the plus two moves over and becomes minus two. We can work out what we've got there. 10 minus two is obviously eight. And then finally we divide by the number next to the letter. The number next to the letter in this case is two. So we divide both sides by two. The reason we do that is because these twos will then cancel, which leaves us with the letter by itself. And obviously eight divided by two gives you four. So that's how you deal with brackets and added and subtracted terms and dividing by the number next to the letter for normal solving equations. Now make sure you're happy with that first, and then I'll show you how this works with transposition. All right, so first example, we'll have A outside the brackets, N plus one inside the brackets, and we'll have a D on the other side. Now, when you do transposition, it will always tell you in the question which letter you want by itself. It usually says transpose this equation for, and then it gives you a letter, this time I'm gonna say we want the N by itself. I always write it at the top right in a circle to remind myself that that's the letter I want by itself. It's very easy to forget. When all the letters start moving around, you can lose track of which one you're supposed to get by itself. So write it up here and you won't forget. All right, so step one is remove fractions. We don't have any. Step two is remove brackets. So obviously we do have some brackets. So the number on the outside, the A in this case, multiplies each of the things on the inside one at a time. So it's A times N which is just a n, and then a times the plus one, well, plus one lot of a is just plus a, with a kind of imaginary one that we don't need to write in front of the a. And there are no brackets on the right hand side, so we leave it like that. So you can see we do exactly the same thing when you multiply brackets for solving equations. You just take the thing on the outside and multiply the things on the inside one at a time. Step two is move added and subtracted terms. So we do have some added terms here. So you want the letters on one side, the numbers on the other side. Now the only letter we care about here is the N. So you want all of your N's on one side and all the other numbers, the other letters if you like, they need to go on the other side. So we leave the AM where it is on the left. The D is gonna stay on the right. Just like over here, we left the 10 here. And then the plus A, 
just like the plus 2, moves over to the other side, chain size, chain signs, the plus A will become a minus A. The difference is that whereas here we could then work out what 10 minus 2 is, it gives you 8, here we can't. We don't know what D is, we don't know what A is, so we don't have to work it out. You just leave it like that. So in that sense, transposition is easier to do than solving equations. Last step, then you divide by the number next to the letter. Uh, which letter? Oh yes, it's the one we care about, the N. So it's the number next to the N. And the number next to the N is the A. So we're going to divide everything by A. So divide by A on the left. Divide everything by A on the right. So those A's will cancel, which leaves you with the N by itself. And don't try and mess around with this. Whatever that fraction is, just leave it as it is. What a lot of people try and do is cancel the A's. Now, without going into all the details, you can't cancel the A's here. All right? You just have to leave it. And most of the time, that's the way it works out. So don't try and mess around with it. As I say, leave it like that. That will be your final answer. The N is by itself, which is what you've been asked to do in the question. When it says transpose something for a letter, it just means get that letter by itself, which is what we've done. So we're finished. Um, just very quickly, the reason you can't cancel these A's is because there's no A here. If you're going to divide by A effectively on the top and the bottom of the fraction, that's how we cancel fractions, there must be an A in all of the terms. So because there's not an A there, you can't just divide some of them and not divide other bits. Alright, so that's the three steps. That's brackets, expanding brackets, moving added and subtracted terms, chain size, chain signs, and then dividing by the number next to the letter. That's how you put it all together. All right, let's do a couple more examples. But as I say, if you look at the solving equations example, if you just follow that, it's exactly the same. We're not doing anything different. We, didn't ha we just don't have to work out the numbers each time. So it's less work, which is great. All right, let's try a slightly harder one. So P equals T, X plus Y in brackets, and then minus R at the end. And this time I want to get the y by itself. So step one, remove fractions. There are no bracket. Uh, sorry, no fractions. Step two is remove brackets. And we do have brackets, so we multiply out the brackets. So the number on the outside, the t, multiplies the things on the inside one at a time. So p in this case is going to be t times x, which is tx, plus the t times the y, minus the r. The r is not inside the brackets. So don't multiply it by the t. The t is only next to the brackets. It only multiplies the things inside the brackets. So that would be our second line. Now we move added or subtracted terms. We've got a couple of these. Uh, and this is the letters on one side, numbers on the other side step. So you want all of your y's. Yeah, it's very easy to forget which letter you want to leave by itself. But it's the y's you want to leave. Everything else wants to go onto the other side. So the ty is the only bit we're going to leave. The tx we're going to move over. The minus r, we're going to move over, so we leave the ty by itself. So, the ty stays here. The um, tx, when it moves over, is going to become a minus tx. I don't really want to start with a negative if I can help it. The minus r, when it moves over, becomes a plus r, so that's good. What I might do is move this positive p and make write that as the first thing. So we'll have p... Then the, sorry, the tx moves over and becomes a minus tx. And then the minus r moves over and becomes a plus r. Yeah, it's chain sides, chain signs. If something moves from one side of the equal sign to the other side of the equal sign, you must change the sign. So if you just look at that for a second, you should hopefully see where all the bits have gone. The p hasn't gone anywhere, it's still on the left. The tx was on the right, it's now on the left, it's chain sign. The ty was on the right, it's still on the right, I haven't moved it, so it stays positive. And the minus r was on the right, it's moved to the left, so it's changed from a minus to a plus. So I've got all my y's on one side, and all the other bits that were added and subtracted to it have been moved across to the other side. So that's how you deal with all the bits. Final step then, we divide by the number next to the letter. Uh, which letter? Well again, that's the letter we care about. So we're dividing by the number next to the y. The number next to the y is the t. Remember, letters are numbers in algebra. So we're dividing everything by t. So on the left, we divide by t, giant fraction. On the right, we divide by t because those t's will cancel. It will leave you with the y's by itself. And all of that, don't mess with it. 
just write it down as it is. You're going to get P minus TX plus R on the top, all divided by T on the bottom. And again, we can't cancel these T's because you don't have T's here and here as well. You can't cancel them. So don't try, don't mess with it. Leave it as it is, it should be fine. That's your final answer. Some people like to switch it around and write the Y on the left. You can do that if you want to, but it doesn't really make any difference. The objective is to get the Y by itself on one side. It is, so you've done it. Okay, we'll do one more example. This one uh, is an actual equation from physics this time. So we're going to have Q equals CM and then inside the brackets T subscript 1 minus T subscript 0. Let me just explain briefly what the context is here. Uh, imagine you've got a block of some kind of metal and you're heating it up and you're going to heat it up to different temperatures, for example. You can do this with all kinds of things. You could do it with a beaker full of water or whatever. But essentially, you've got some kind of object that you're heating up. So T0 is the starting temperature. T1 is the temperature after you've heated it up. M is the mass of the water or the block of metal, whatever it is you're heating up. C is a constant um, called the specific heat capacity. Essentially, it tells you how difficult it is to heat some, the thing up. So water has a particular value for C, which tells you how much heat you have to put in to get it to heat up. So some things heat up much slower than others. Water is actually quite difficult to heat up. Metal is much easier to heat up. It heats up much faster. So the specific heat capacity, this number, is just different for different objects. But it will be the same if you've got one particular object, whether it's the water in the beaker or the block of metal, whatever it is. And Q is simply the amount of heat or energy you put into the block. So if you stick a Bunsen burner underneath a block of metal, obviously it heats up. And that's the amount of heat you're putting into the thing that you're heating up. So don't worry too much about the context, but imagine we've been given this and we wanted to find out the starting temperature. So imagine we know how much heat we've put into our block. We know the specific heat capacity for this particular metal, let's say. We know how heavy it is, obviously you can weigh it. And we might then have our block at this final temperature. We've measured the temperature after we've heated it up. And we want to know what was the starting temperature? How hot was it before we started putting any heat into it? So we're going to try and get the T0 by itself. So it's exactly the same as normal. It doesn't matter that this is some complicated physics context. Letters are letters. At the end of the day, they just represent unknown numbers. You treat them all the same. So step one, remove fractions no fractions. Step two, remove brackets. We do have brackets. So the things on the outside, the number on the outside multiplies the things on the inside one at a time. Now I've got a C times an M here on the outside of these brackets. That's multiplying that which is multiplying the bracket. So both of these things need to multiply everything in the bracket. So no brackets on the left. I don't need to worry about that. But CM times T1 gives me CMT1. Obviously that's how you write multiplication in algebra. You just write them next to each other. And then CM times the minus T0 will give you a minus CM T0. Yeah, so you can see the CMs multiply the T1 here, and then the CMs multiply the T0 here. All right, so that was our bracket. Step three is uh, moving added and subtracted terms. So this is the letters to one side, numbers to the other side bit. We want the T0 by itself. You want to leave this here and move everything else across to the other side. Now you do have a little bit of a, a choice here, I should say. Usually we like things to be positive. We don't like minus signs in maths. It makes life difficult and often causes us to make mistakes if there are too many of them. So we, we have to be very careful with minus signs. And one slight difficulty here is that this thing with our T0 in that we care about is negative. So we could move this over here and then we'd have to divide by the minus CM on the last step. But the other option is you could move the T0 bit to this side, move the Q back over here, and then because it's negative at the moment, it will become positive, and we wouldn't have this nasty minus sign here. So I think I might do that. Yeah, you don't have to do it that way. You could move this thing over and divide by the negative CM, but I like to have my terms positive, so I'm gonna move the T0 term over to here. As long as you get these things by themselves on one side and everything on the other side, it's fine. So my minus CM, T0 moves over to the left and becomes a positive CMT0. The CMT1 
is going to stay here because now it's on the other side from where the T0 was, or is now. And the only other thing I need to move is the Q. It's positive over here. Yep, there's an imaginary plus sign in front of it. So I'm going to move it over to the right and it becomes negative. So it's going to be minus Q. So just take a second to get your head around that. The, uh, oh, and I made a slight mistake. Did you spot it? <laughs> that should be a one. So the CMT1 has stayed there. That's not moved anywhere. The Q, which was positive, has moved over to the other side and become negative. And then the minus CMT0 has moved over to the left and become a positive. The point of doing that is I've got the T noughts on this side, possibly with something next to them, but all the things that were added and subtracted are now on the right hand side. They're on the other side from the T noughts. And notice that this minus that was here is now a positive. So the thing in front of my T naught is a positive thing, which is just easier to deal with. That's why I've done it this way. Final step then, you divide by the number next to the letter. Which letter do we care about? We care about the T0. So I want to divide by the number next to the T0. Now the thing that's multiplying the T0 is the CM. Yeah? Remember C and M are both numbers, and if you multiply C and M together, you're going to get another number. Whatever C times M is, that's ultimately the number that's multiplying the T0. So that's what we need to divide by. We need to divide everything, not just by M, but by CM. So it's exactly the same method though. You just do a fraction, you write a CM on the bottom, on both sides, the reason we do that is because these C's will cancel and so will those M's, which will leave us with the T0 by itself, which is what we're trying to do. Get this T0 by itself. And then don't try and mess with this. Don't try and cancel the C's and the M's here. Yet yeah, there are no C's and M's in this term, so you're not allowed to cancel them. So the final answer here is going to be CMT1 minus Q on the top of the fraction. On the bottom of the fraction, it's CM. T0 is by, us, by itself. So we've done it! Hooray! And that was a more involved, but actually the steps are no more difficult. We're doing exactly the same steps as we have done all the way along. We've multiplied out the brackets, we moved the letters onto one side, numbers onto the other side, we divided by the number next to the letter. It's the same thing here. It looks weird, but if you follow the steps carefully, be careful about your signs, yep, yeah, change sides, change signs, then you should be okay. All right, so go and watch uh, Transposition 4 now if you want to know how to add fractions into the mix, and then you should be able to cope with just about everything. Um, but that shows you how to deal with brackets, as I say, just like solving equations. My name is Jonathan Hicks, and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Mm -hmm.